Hi everyone, Jeremy Blum here, checking in from San Francisco, where I've basically been trapped in my apartment since March. I'm sure all of you are feeling the effects of the coronavirus pandemic. I'm certainly no exception. I'm very fortunate in that I'm healthy and, and safe where I am and have been able to work from home for the most part from right here, in fact. Uh, but a lot has changed day to day, and I've been trying to do things to kind of cope, uh, keep my mind sharp, work on side projects, uh, and to just get exercise. Uh, and so on that note, I wanted to share a project that I've been working on. It's kind of been a fun thing to keep me occupied on the side, but also an opportunity for me to make sure I still get some exercise since I'm not doing my normal bike commute to work. And that was to take my bike indoors, hook it up to a dyno, hook it up to some custom electronics, write some software, and make what I'm calling Blum.bike, which is a totally open source, easy to duplicate yourself, uh, at home stationary bike that you can use to track sessions, uh, go on bike rides, dynamically adjust the resistance as you're riding the bike, uh, track your heart rate, uh, and, and track the speed of the bike throughout your bike ride. So I'm gonna walk you through the project as it stands right now. It's still a work in progress. There's probably more I'm gonna do on this. Um, but I'll walk you through how it works, through the electronics, through some of the software, and of course, uh, there's links in the description. This project's totally open source. You can find all the source code, all the schematics, the links to all the components, the design files for the 3D printed elements, all the stuff that you need to duplicate this project if that's something you're interested in. So let's take a look at the bike and how it works. Okay, so here's the bike set up in my living room. You can see I have it mounted on a stationary bike trainer. I just got that off Amazon and then all the other modifications I've done, mostly using stuff that I already had at home. So to start, let's take a look at what the interface looks like to a user riding on the bike. So when you're sitting on the bike, uh, you'll have your phone mounted right here, navigated to the blum.bike web app. And uh, what you can see here is the information from my last session. So when you're in an active session, it'll show you live data. When you're out of an active session, it will show you the data from the last active session. So you can see in my last session, it was 25 minutes long. I had a average bike speed of 18.75 miles per hour. I had an average resistance of 7.29. That's on a scale from one to 10. The system allows you to dynamically control the resistance of the bike. I'll show you how that works in a second. And um, I had an average heart rate of about 138 beats per minute. Now it says I had a max heart rate of 207 beats per minute. That's probably wrong. The heart rate sensor is not quite perfect. You can see this graph data here. So during the entirety of the uh, ride, I'm capturing the speed once per second, the resistance once per second, and your heart rate once per second. You can see that uh, over 200 beats per second spike happened right there just for an instance. It's probably just noisy data. Uh, the heart rate sensor is not totally perfect, but for the most part, it's, it's pretty darn good. It's basically, I was basically right at 150 beats per minute for most of the ride, and you can see my heart rate went up uh, as I started. You can also see I adjusted the resistance several times over the course of the ride. Uh, starts at three by default, went up to eight, and then I moved it around a bunch. The web app is uh, fully responsive, so it looks nice on mobile for when you're on the bike, but you can also review your session details on the desktop uh, afterwards. This is what it looks like on the desktop. You can see that post session, it shows the information, uh, the session stats over on the left side. And on the right side, it shows you all the graph data that was captured from that session. Now, before I show you what the uh, interface looks like while you're actively in a session, let's take a look at the hardware and how it's set up. So at the back of the bike here, you'll see I have a bunch going on. The big silver part is the mechanical dyno that shipped as part of uh, the stationary trainers. So that's what puts uh, resistance onto the bike wheel. You can see the bike wheel rest, rest against it there. And it, as the bike wheel spins, it pushes against this thing and this dyno imparts some mechanical resistance so that you have to work for it. So uh, what I've done here is several things. I have made that resistance uh, electrically controllable. I've made it uh, precision homeable. So at start, it'll home and we'll know exactly what the resistance position is. I have used a uh, reflectivity sensor mounted in there, pointed here. You can see it reflected in there uh, that we use to measure the and compute the miles per hour that the bike is moving at based on the ratio between 
the dyno size and the bike tire diameter. So you can see as I move this, there is a black piece of tape that moves in front of the reflectivity sensor. Each time it moves in front of it, we know we've completed one rotation and we can time that and use that to compute the speed of the bike to show it live to the user. Looking at the left side of the bike, uh, you can see on a little 3D printed bracket here, and most of this is all 3D printed elements, I have uh, mounted the heart rate receiver. So this connects to a polar uh, chest strap that I wear on my chest while I'm biking. It captures my heart rate. It sends it wirelessly to this guy, uh, and this generates a pulse out uh, to the microcontroller every time that there is a heartbeat. This thing is not perfect. It captures some spurious pulses every once in a while. And I've noticed that if I'm not actually wearing the chest strap on my chest, it kind of gets pulses anyway. Uh, I don't know what the deal is with that, but the heart rate appears to be pretty accurate uh, while I'm wearing it. So uh, that connects down to the rest of the electronics here. So the baseboard that this is mounted on here has an opening cut out uh, for our stepper motor. So this is a NEMA 17 stepper motor with a planetary gearbox mounted to the front of it. And you can see that it's, uh, you can see that it's attached to uh, this 3D printed adapter that I've made that connects it into the lead screw. And so that lead screw is what's going to push the dyno up and down uh, and allow us to adjust the resistance. The stepper motor itself needs to physically slide back and forth as this moves up and down and that's why I made this kind of unique mounting system for it. I cut it out uh, with my Shaper Origin, uh, the company that I work for. So um, back to the breadboard here, basically 12 volts comes in from the wall here. There's a linear regulator to generate five volts. Uh, we have a stepper driver I see here that's driving the stepper motor that's connected here and we're using a particle photon Wi-Fi enabled microcontroller to do all the smarts and handle the API communication back and forth with the web interface. Over here is where our end stop switch plugs in so that we can detect uh, when the resistance has been lowered all the way. Okay, let's see what happens when we turn the electronics on. The switch is right here. Flip that on. You can see it's powering up. The photon will first uh, connect to the Wi-Fi access point. Okay, so what it's gonna first do is you can see it's lowering the dyno to the end stop. That yellow LED lights up when it hits the end stop. You could probably hear it click. And then it's gonna raise it back up to the zero point and then up to the default starting resistance, which I have set to three. The resistance can be set on an arbitrary scale from one to 10. So you can see that this dyno is now pressed up against the wheel and moving the wheel spins it. Each time the black bar passes in front of the sensor, you'll see the green LED lights up. By detecting how frequently that happens, we can then compute the miles per hour speed of the bike. Okay, now let's take a look at what happens when we go into an active session on the bike. Okay, now I'm on the bike and we're gonna start a session. Basically, as soon as I start pedaling, uh, the bike will send a command up to the remote web server saying that a session has started by detecting a change in RPMs of the bike. Uh, the website will then automatically update on mobile and desktop to indicate that we're currently in a live session. So as soon as I start pedaling here, we'll see the website start updating immediately. So I just started pedaling. And so a couple things have changed here. One, uh, it's now enabled buttons to enable me to control the uh, increase or decrease the resistance in my session. Uh, it shows my current session stats instead of the stats of the last session that ended. And the graphs start updating dynamically and in real time. Uh, updates are sent approximately once every second from the bike up to the web and then graphed here. And this is saved to be stored afterwards as well. So I can uh, send a command to increase the resistance, for example. So when I tap that, you probably can't hear it, but the stepper motor just engaged behind me and uh, pushed the dyno farther into the bike wheel, thus making it harder for me to pedal. And I'll increase it again. And you can see the resistance has gone up again a little bit. And you can also track the speed here. So if I start pedaling a bunch faster, we can see the speed will go up. 
and back down. The way the uh, resistance control options show up here uh, is based on your public facing IP address. So basically if the requests that are coming or the commands that are coming from the photon match the IP address that the web app is requesting control from, uh, the buttons will show up and will be authorized to send commands uh, over the API. That's how I'm authenticating it. So basically, if you're on the same Wi-Fi network as the bike, you get the options to control the bike. If you're not, then you can see the live data output, but you can't send any commands to control the resistance. And then the session will end automatically once I stop pedaling for more than about five seconds. So I'll stop pedaling. And as soon as the wheel stops uh, freewheeling, few seconds later the session will end automatically and it'll switch to a summary view. And so you can see it's just happened. Now I can see the summary of that ride I just did. It was about two minutes. I hit a top speed of 25 miles per hour. My max resistance was setting six and my heart rate reached a maximum of about 130 beats per minute. All right, that's it. Uh, thanks for taking a look through the project with me. I hope you found it interesting. If you have any questions, feel free to throw them in the comments here or on my website, jeremyblum.com. You'll also find links in the description to all the source code and everything like that. And if you duplicate this project or make something similar to it, uh, please uh, shoot it over to me, send me a link. I'd love to check it out. Okay, I hope all of you stay safe and healthy out there during these difficult times. And uh, yeah, keep hacking.